Hey guys, it's Rob, or I guess XL if you really want to call me that, but I've gotten a couple requests to cover some basic things in FL Studio, like drum mastering and mixing and all that kind of deal, so uh, I'm just going to go over basic drum mixing and making, it's just, it's basically the process that makes your drums clean and that makes it so that they can hit harder, I guess you could say. So, okay, just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to use the basic FL Studio like drums, so the kick, clap, hat, and the snare. Uh, you can see the tempo is 140, so that's what we're going to be working with. That's your typical dubstep kind of tempo. Uh, sometimes I like to go with like 170 if it's drum step or something like that. 175 is good too. Um, but yeah, let's, let's get over to this. So, what I'm going to do here is place a kick right at the beginning of this pattern here. And I'm just going to have this loop. Alright, so when I open up the channel settings here, and you just do that by clicking on the uh, the channel menu here. So, you can see here on the channel settings, in the top right, I have effects, and it's routed to 1. So, if I double click that, it brings me up to my mixer. Now, if you see here, every time I click on a channel, it highlights a certain mixer, because these sounds are all linked to different mixer tracks. Uh, if you import your own, whoops, if you import your own sounds, so let's say I go over here and I drag in something like this and I go like this and I click on it, it's not going to be assigned to something. So you have to assign it yourself. Because I'm working with the uh, the template when I open up FL Studio, this is all already routed to these. So, so I have a kick on insert one. So why don't we rename this to kick, I guess, and uh, open up one thing here called parametric EQ2 on the mixer. So now Whenever the sound hits here, it's going to show up here, and it's going to go through all these effects before it goes out to the actual, like, to the output. So, what we're going to do is, when you see the kick here, you can see how it, like, lights up lower than, like, in, like you'll see. It, it's pretty it's pretty intense around this area, and then it's not so much here, and then it kind of comes back a little bit here, because you got to have high end on your kick. You can't have all low end because that just makes it sound really low and you can't really hear the rest of it, so here let's, here, let's give you an example. So, you see how it starts here and it kind of moves down? You'll also notice that in, uh, in like, if you're watching YouTube videos where the dubstep song or whatever has uh, an EQ visualizer, you'll see that the kick kind of flows in, like it kind of waves up like this at first and kind of goes down like that. You'll see, it comes in really fast, does it really fast. So. What you kind of want to do is kind of want to emulate that. So how can you do that is you kind of just want to do this. And you see there's a bit of a gray area here where it doesn't really hit. So I'm just going to have this loop and kind of just work with it. I'm not putting too much bass at the end of this. Like too much. I'm not going to do this. Because that kind of makes it really weird. That's more for club kind of stuff. But since we want more compressed kind of feel, we're going to go with a bit of a higher kick. So also going to raise up the high end a bit, not too much, but just, just enough to pronounce the kick. So let's go back in our mixer here because we're not nearly done. We see that it's hitting at around negative, negative 9, I guess. Oh, that's one, that one's actually hitting way higher. Okay, so negative 6 is actually where you want to be. So let's bring that down a bit because we're going to bring in a sound goodizer. You see that that just jumped my sound a lot, so we're going to bring that down. And I like for my kicks and snares to hit around negative six, but that's before they go into the limiter, so I'm gonna bring this down a little bit. And another thing you can do is you can add reverb, but that's not something I really like to do, so sometimes I just add one percent or like up to five, but I usually don't even have reverb, so just for the sake of this, we're not gonna have that. And we're actually gonna put on a limiter. Um, it's not so much of a limiter, I've learned this just recently, it's not so much of a limiter as it is a compressor. Basically, I'll play the sound through this and you'll see. So you see how high it hits. Actually, let's get the line out of there. So You see how high it hits. Um, if I can stop this, yeah. Uh, basically, you don't want it to be that high. You want to compress it. So what I'm going to do, is I'm just going to do this because I do want it to hit pretty hard. Um, basically, you're setting the threshold here. This is all like mastering kind of stuff. This is pretty advanced stuff, but like it's, it's not that hard once you start to get it, but uh, just in the sake of this tutorial, I won't go that in depth to it. In, sorry, in depth. So, 
now you can see if I unpause it, it's starting to compress a little bit. And you can see that it's hitting it a bit less. So let's bring it up a bit. And we should be okay with that. So let's move on to, I guess, the clap. So let's put a clap here and we can start to create a beat. So let's rename this to clap. All right. And let's do the same thing for this that we did with the kick. You can see that the clap is a lot higher end than in, than like the, the kick was. So I like to do the same thing, throw a sound goodizer on there, kind of makes it a bit cleaner. Uh, unlike the kick, I like to actually throw a lot of reverb on the clap. So I like to bring up the high cut, the low cut, and the damping, and I bring the reverb down a bit because I do want that pshhh, you'll, you'll hear it. It's a, it's a type of reverb. Did you hear that? Well, you probably did, but like, I don't know, it's hard to explain, but this is my first tutorial, so I'm trying to do uh, my best, I guess. So, yeah, so basically that's what a clap should sound like. Although it is pretty loud, so let's turn that down, and we're actually going to bring the low down, because we need to save some of this area for the snare. Alright, cool. So, let's put a hat in, and rename this to hat, I suppose, and already we know it's a high hat, so it's going to be obviously high, it's going to be in the treble area instead of the low bass area, so we can already make that adjustment. So. Actually, do not like that uh, hi hat at all. And I just got a text, sorry. Let's throw that over there. So, let's go with some. I guess we could do something. I guess we can go with this. So, yeah, you might want to move the, uh, <laughs> the stuff out of the way before you go and do that. So, let's just rename this to hat. And because I moved it into the same spot, uh, it's going to keep that same target mixer track, so. So now we kind of have a pretty good, uh, pretty good beat going on. Well, it's actually very simple. I can actually just, like, throw this up a bit and make it a bit better. is throw some reverb on that hi-hat too and also I'm just gonna bring it up like this you might not want to do this kind of bring all these knobs all the way up because that gives you quite a bit of high end later on but I can I can tone that down in Maximus but you might not want to do that okay so last off is the snare so we're gonna put that in the same spot as the clap so that they hit at the same time and make it harder so Let's bring this down a bit because we know it's going to be a bit too loud. So let's let's hear what this sounds like. Oh man, that is a poor snare. I just do not agree with that snare. So what we're going to do here is bring in a different one. That one's actually not bad. I actually really like that snare. So let's use that. What I'm going to do is bring down the clap because I want to emphasize the snare. Whoops. Sorry guys. You see that the snare hits a lot lower. Not as low as the kick, but lower than the clap. Let's just throw a couple more things on here. Okay, we also just want to do this, do this, kind of throw this down a bit. Now this is a really basic beat, you might want to throw in some other things, like, I don't know, you could mess around with some effects or maybe throw in some more cymbals, like... Here's something like this you could do, just call this, like, Hat 2, and throw it on its own mixer track, and call it Hat 2. Sorry if I touched the mic there, I'm using actually a, uh a rock band mic to record my voice here, so if it's really bad, 
I apologize. So, let's just do this, because we know it's a hi-hat, so we know it's going to be really high up, so let's bring this down, and let's make this one hit a bit faster. I actually want that to be even higher, just barely, barely audible. So we can do that. So that's basically it for uh, basic drumming. So not basic drumming, but basic uh, drum sequencing, I guess you could say, in FL Studio. So let's rename this pattern to Drum Loop One, and uh, we're ready to throw it in our song. So let's, I guess, let's do that. You can hear that that kick doesn't really quite. It hits more low than it does high. So we want to kind of. Well, yeah, you do want it to hit more low than high, but you also want it to have some high up mid kind of stuff. Maybe you should lower this a bit. Yeah, that should be good. Kind of do this. All right, there you go. That should be basically it. Now, what else you can do is throw a limiter on here on the master channel, and you can see. You see that none of my sounds are going over 0 dB, because that's not what you want. But what you can do is make it so they go very close to 0 dB to make your song louder, but still not go over a certain limit. So let's throw Maximus on there. You see it just goes way too loud. So what we're going to do is solo out the lows, mids, and highs. So I guess we can do a bit of mastering here. Might as well throw it in uh, to the tutorial. It's going to be a bit longer, but if you're still here, uh, you're obviously interested. So Let's do this. So we're going to start with low. Oh, whoops. Sorry. I accidentally hit spacebar. Alright, so basically our low is fine, because I adjusted that a little bit. But So let's see how this is doing. High is probably too high. So that should be okay. Alright, let's lower everything just a little bit just to make sure. So I do this. I'm actually going to do this too to give it more of a compressed feel. So let's do this. kick is still a bit too loud, so we're going to lower that a little bit. That's actually might be a little bit too much. Where's my access? Right, here we go. So let's bring down the low just a little bit. And let's bring down the mid just a tiny bit. And lower that, we'll bring down the hot just a tiny bit. Let's bring this down a little bit. And yeah, it's it's not perfect. It's not perfect, but uh, it's pretty pretty decent, I guess. You can still see in the limiter. It's not really it's not really clipping or anything. Oops. But you can see it actually peaks pretty close to zero deci decibels, which you never want to go over. So yeah, that's uh, that's basically it. Uh, if you guys have any more questions or anything, just let me know. Um, I covered actually quite a bit in this tutorial, so I might do a couple more. I'll probably do one on Massive in the future, I just don't really have the time to do that at this moment. So basically the basics, I guess, to FL Studio, drum and like drum percussion, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you could also throw in perks and stuff like that, but that I guess well that'll be advanced drums or whatever. So yeah, I'll uh, see you guys later, I guess. <laughs>